So let's move on to the cylinder head. I didn't explain, I have 33mm stuck out of there and I'm going to make its overall length 25 when finished. Nice round figures again. So face the end. Speed things up a bit. Quite clean up there. You've got to love machining grass. I'll set my DRO on the end there. And I know I want 10 millimeters of thread, so I want a shoulder 10 mil back, 10 mil down. So I'll just go to something like, I don't know, 9.5, 9, something like that. I'm going to wait. I'll explain why in a minute. The time to do this. Eight. I'm looking for ten diameter ready to put a thread on. Nine. I think we'll, uh, we'll call that 10 mil. <laughs> Lucky devil, I think we'll call that. So, let me just uh, give myself a zero there. Where are we? There. I'm going to want to put a fillet radius in the bottom of here to match up with an O-ring. So I'm going to go for my 10 mil. I'm going to stop a couple of mil from the bottom. So I'm roughing it out with the fairly square tool. And I'll just get a little radius tool in there at the end. 8.75. 9. Probably go about 9 and a half. Okay, so let me bring you in on that a bit. So you'll see I've left a little 2mm by 2mm shoulder in the corner. So that's 10mm, going back to 8 That back shoulder is 10mm from the front face, and the corner shoulder is a 2mm square one. Because I'm thinking 2mm radius. So somewhere around here, I have a piece of high-speed steel with a radius something similar. That should do me. I didn't have one, so I had to grind one up. I don't know whether you can pick that up. Just hand formed. Relief in two directions. Little late tool. I don't know how well you can pick that up, but trust me, there's about a two and a half mil radius on the top of that little late tool, which I just ground freehand out of uh, out of an old late tool. I thought I'd probably have one, something similar, but I didn't. So I just rounded off the corner on a standard high speed steel lathe tool. So the next step we'll set that up and put a little fillet radius in the bottom corner of here. So the tool's all set up. And I'll just pull that a little bit higher in the bottom out. I know I want to go about half mil off the back face. So I'll come to there, give myself a zero. And just come into the bottom there.
Cut chop on the tan. There we are. Let's see if I can give you a close up of the little radius on there. Trying my best here, but as you can see, down at the tan, radius in the corner here. Uh, I think you can just about pick it up. I can see it on the on the little two inch screen, so I dare say it'll come out when you're watching it. So we got 10 mil back to the shoulder, 10 mil diameter, with a two mil fillet radius, and that's for an O-ring to sit against. So next thing, I'll put a chamfer on the end to help the die start, and we'll wind in a M10 die just to the start of that radius. Swing that round a bit more, I think. To be kind of the day. Something like that. And we'll get our tail stock die holder out. I'm going to thread down there. So you've seen me do this before. M10 die. Winding handle. I want to stop just before the radius so I won't be winding it right into the shoulder base of the die is about two mil from the shoulder there so let's have a look at that I think I could probably go another half turn Have a look at that. And wind it back. Okay, we'll give you a close up of that. But I've just put a piece of white paper behind just to make it a bit clearer, but uh, you can see that M10 thread goes all the way up and it doesn't cut into that radius. It's just short of that radius, the last bit of the M10 thread where it runs out. So that will allow an O-ring to sit still nicely on that radius without having a, a bit of thread underneath it, so to speak. So I'll just put a nice chamfer on the end of that thread now. And uh, that'll be the threading in bit done of the cylinder head, shall we call it. A chamfer on there. And a chamfer on there. Right. So let's just pull this out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, I've just put a chamfer on the bottom of there. Just to help it start. And there's a chamfer there. Now as it stands at the moment, if I try and screw the cylinder head onto the piston, there's a big gap because obviously the threads run out. Now when there's an o-ring on that shoulder it will sit into a taper in here and we need to machine this taper to a depth where when i screw it on there is a hair of daylight as it stands at the moment let's see where we can get it to i got about a two mil gap in there but when I machine a 45 in the end of here, obviously it's going to go in further and further. I want it to bottom on the O-ring before it actually closes. So, I've got a little burr there where the end of the tap went. I'll get it that with a little needle file. A little triangular needle file. See what I can find. I'll pack it here. Here we go. Let me just take that. Let that final 
thread have a little run out before it hits the chamfer. That's it, the, the last cutting tooth of the die actually threw up a little burr on me. Right, okay. So I'm going to pull this out of the lathe now and I'm going to drill a cross hole five millimeters through there. Now five millimetre diameter hole would have a wall of two and a half from the centre of the outside and I want to leave a couple of mil of wall on here so I'm going to drill a five millimetre hole probably about five millimetres back and that will leave me two and a half millimetres of wall so I'll mark out a line five millimetres simplest way to do that with a bit of brass would be just get my little calipers you could put a bit of a marking blue something like that on your uh, on your brass just to highlight it a bit more but a little line close enough I'd say not critical doesn't matter if it's five and a half doesn't matter if it's four and a half as long as it's uh, sort of greater than three and you don't want to come too far up and that will become obvious a bit later on so if I could find my chuck key it's under my needle files we can now take this out of the chuck and drill the cross hole. We're going to part it off at 15 millimetres later. But while we've still got a big lump of metal, it's easier to hold in the vise to drill a cross hole. So I just centre punched a hole on the line. But of course, how do we know it's on centre? We don't. I've just centre punched a hole on the line. Tiny little centre punch. Now if I had a milling machine, i put it up in the vise in the milling machine. I'd edge find it, find the centre, find the edge here, move back 5 mil, and whack my hole through. I haven't got any of that. I could set it up edge finding it um, by putting in my milling fixture in the lathe, but the way I do it, quick and simple, is I'll rotate the part by eye until not, not quite in the little B groove of my uh, vice here. Right. Just rotate it by eye. Eye it up along the end of here. You can use a straight edge, a rule, something like that. Eye it up. To see the centre top is on the top. And from what I can see where I'm stood, that looks pretty good. This is going to be to hold a piece of string through. It's not critical. It will be absolutely fine. So, I'll centre drill it and drill it out 5mm. A good opportunity to use my little support here. Right, I think something like... Here we are. That's my little table support. So... I'll try and keep out of the camera's view. Pick up that centre pop. a little centre looks, looks good swap the drill for an M5 must bolt my drill back down onto the bench. I haven't uh, bolted it back down since I was messing about with the compressor a while ago. And a 5mm drill. You can adjust the size of this hole, as long as it's not massive, obviously. Depending on what cord that you're going to be using at a later date. Um, I haven't actually bought the cord yet, but I know I'm going to get something like 2mm paracord, something like that. We've got a lot of... Um, being by the coast here we've got a lot of chandlers i think the word is chandlers boat shops and um, paracord that sort of thing boating cord nylon cord you know the really nice uh, black stuff shouldn't have any problem sourcing some of that locally and just pick up that second little hole Oh, 
my thumb out of the way from underneath. So if that breaks through, as you can see my, my thumb there, if that broke through, I can easily go through and have a nice five mil hole in my thumb. I'll move it out of the way. <laughs> there we go. And I think we'll have a little chamfer on both sides of that. Straightforward enough, I can do that by hand. In fact, sometimes with a round surface like that, using a countersink bit and doing it by hand is often the best way. But again, not for the faint hearted, and there would be a possibility of drilling a hole in your hand if you're not careful. Not too bad with a countersink. So let's just pull that out of the vice. Yeah, it looks pretty good for central. And as you can see, I'm rotating it around its axis because the center drill of the jumpering bit will want to cut both sides but nothing in the middle so if you approach it on a either side it'll give you a more uniform little chamfer so there we are cross hole drilled and I don't know if I put where's that 5 mil drill I haven't got it right here now let's see if I can show you where is it there it is, 5 mil. Put the 5 mil drill back through. As you can see, it's not bad. Oh, stop shaking, eh? <laughs> Don't know whether you can pick that up on the camera. Bear with me two seconds. Zoom you in on that a bit. There you are. Well, as you can see, it's not bad for central about. So I've got this pack of assorted o-rings here metric o-rings i got it from a local um, well in the uk it's uh, i won't say the name out loud but it's uh, a diy motor factor should we call it that sells bicycles and that sort of thing and there's various o-rings in here now at a glance if i grab that one that one there is 10 mil it, you know it'll just it just sits over the top of the thread i think it just feels a bit too much, I don't know. Perhaps a go. Here's one that's a bit smaller. I'd say that's more like 9mm inside. But it will stretch over there. And sits down in that corner. But it would with a bit of oil. Quite nicely. So I think that's the O-ring I'm going to use. For the time being. So that's my O-ring. Now I need to adjust the cylinder so that that will only just close. So that's my next step. So I got my chamfering bit up. I've got the cylinder back in the lathe. And I'm just going to... In very small increments... for this bore. Now this is quite an important bit because we need a gas tight seal here. So oh, just move my tail sock back out of the way. Try not to hit the camera. I actually managed not to hit the camera that time. Now if I screw that in as you can see or cannot see I can still see the o-ring there. It's not it's not entering. Everything else is going in, but it's not entering into that chamfer. So, a little bit more. And I'm going to take this ever so gently, <laughs> ever so gently. <laughs> Just a, you know, a little scratch at a time. You can see that champer's getting bigger and bigger. 
and I'm looking for this perhaps put a little touch of oil on throw it on the floor oh it landed on the floor eventually let's have a little little oil on there just for the hell of it all right a little bit of oil on there now and we'll wind that in there I want it to get to the stage where it bottoms out at very nearly closed and let's see if I can zoom in without losing the picture and as you can see that's not going right up to yet so a little bit bigger again now I've got oil all over my hands <laughs> I'll keep going with this but what I'm looking for is the o-ring very much like in a hydraulic cylinder to seal off a bit more for luck as I say as I was saying to seal off the end of this cylinder and basically acting like a head gasket should we call it now I'm struggling to see this um, because I'm an old git <laughs> I thought I might be able to see it through the camera lens I'm gonna have to get my eye loop on it and have a look so I've been scratching away at this taking a little bit more a little bit more my feet burning bit has actually thrown up a little uh, thrown up a little burr on that face now if you were to go too deep you could simply just face a little bit off the front of here but yeah I've been aiming it to try and get it just right so I can see that the outside of that chamfer now is around about very similar to the outside of that o-ring I can see probably five thou gap in there now and if I tighten that up I think we've got it when you're doing this fit just you know a little bit of time a little bit of time if you know when you're big enough you'll be able to screw it in and you know to within about half a mil but you will see the black o-ring all the way around where it's squashing the o-ring flat rather than down into the taper so if you can see like a half mil of o-ring sticking out you need to go deeper the o-ring actually needs to bed down into the taper and against the radius of the cap of the cylinder head and when you tighten it up that last half mil i mean it should be virtually i mean i can't see i'm, a, I'm like blind pew some days i can just just make out with my eye loop just make out the faintest of blackness down in that hole so I know that it's bottomed quite tightly. Let me just, uh, I don't need to do this up this tight. I'm just, yeah, it's bottomed quite tightly onto the O-ring. So it's the O-ring that it's bottoming out on tightly, providing a very tight seal indeed, because the O-ring is captive in the V, the one side, and the circle on the other. So that's the cylinder head gasket, shall we call it, or O-ring fitted. So next thing I'm going to do mark a line 15 mil back and chop it off so I took it out of the chuck and chopped it off with a hacksaw at the end of the day it's uh, it's a piece of brass three quarters of an inch uh, it's like 30 seconds worth of hacksawing probably quicker than me setting up a parting tool and what have you and another good reason is that I still haven't ordered any new parking tips or tips for my uh, carbide parting tool. I'll have to get round to that. Just reminded myself. So I want this to be 15 mil. So if I just come in here, somewhere near, that'll do. Give myself zero, and we'll face it the length of 15 mil. Well, that's 16. Just 
tìm gọi cô Now we do a finishing cut 0.1 probably finishing cut That's 15.1 And that's 15. Speed things up a bit. 1100. And a nice finishing cut on me. So next thing I'm going to do is skim the OD to the same as the aluminium. I know it's very little come off. I'll just wind in to the slightest of touches on my aluminium. And then I'll just draw the tool back towards the tail stop and feeding this onto the edge. And I hope that was cleaned up. Well, <laughs> hmm. all by the shouting and a bit of polish, it's cleaned up. I'll take another flower or so and I'll stop in the chamber. bar a bit of polish that's cleaned up so a nice big 45 degrees on the end of the cylinder head okay, about two mil should we say there we go so that the cylinder head end done. Probably put a bit of a uh, bit of scotch bright on that. Just to be kind, I've got a bit of white scotch bright. It's got a bit of WD40 in it, but uh, Okay, now we can take it out the truck again. So that's the end of part two. We've got our cylinder, we've got our cylinder head all fitted together. We will be doing a little bit of decoration on it at the end, but that's uh, that's for another episode. In part three, we're going to be machining the piston, and we'll go into the details of what's Y4s and what have you as we machine that with the O-ring and what have you. Now, as I said earlier, this was inspired by a guy called Click Spring. Chris, his name is. He's got a channel on YouTube, very popular channel, far far higher up on YouTube than I am, but <laughs> by a long way. Um, this guy is absolutely superb at handwork, hand fitting, filing, making things, I mean, without machinery, with machinery, but without machinery, that sort of thing. Obviously, when he made his version of this, he did it on a lathe. Um, but if you haven't checked him out, I recommend you check him out. His hand work or hand fitting is second to none. So that's, uh, that's Click Spring, so big up to him. So once again, thanks for watching, guys. Episode 3 won't be too long. And thank you once again to all you that have subscribed. Cheers now.